Turn your Bibles to, to uh, Matthew chapter 1. Christmas is a couple of weeks. I was here already this year. I talk about what's going on in the world. It's already mentioned I depressed you in the Sunday school hour. <laughs> I tell you, some of the things are going on. We live in bizarre times. It uh, just seems like a lot of strange things happening. And as men abandon the truth, they embrace increasingly lies and distortions. And we're living in that kind of day, that's for sure. So I thought I'd focus today just on Jesus. So Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. He, she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Heavenly Father, bless your word now as we open it together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Jesus. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. The setting here is Joseph, who is engaged to a woman named Mary. Before they come together, a husband and wife is discovered that she is expecting Apparently, Mary has told Joseph about an angel coming and visiting her and telling her that she would be the mother of the Messiah, and Joseph has not believed her. He is not convinced. He, th- he suspects that she's had an affair with someone, and the child is someone else's. Uh, that vicious rumor is repeated every once in a while at Christmas time. Recently, the Me Too movement identified Mary saying that she was one of those abused women because God the Father did not ask permission uh, for her to conceive. And that, of course, is nonsense. If you read the Bible, the story is very clear. Mary, when the angel visited, said, Be it unto thee, me, as thou sayest. So she very clearly did, was a willing participate in giving birth to the Savior, but it was a hard thing. She had to tell Joseph. Joseph didn't believe her. That would be a hard thing. He's minded to put her away privately. He's going to break off the engagement and walk away. And God, the Father, sent an angel to talk to him in his sleep and tell him, listen, this is, this is, she's telling you the truth. This is the way it is. And then adds, and you'll call his name Jesus, because he shall save his people from their sins. There's just something about the name Jesus. First of all, it's, it's an easy name. Children can say it very easily. You don't have to be very old before you can teach a child to, uh, to say the word Jesus. It just kind of rolls off the tongue. It's very simple. Some names are hard to speak, hard to, to get across. I have, uh, Barb has a niece who had married a man named Oppenheimer, and they named their son Fisher, Fisher Oppenheimer. That's a lot for a kindergartner to write on a piece of paper. <laughs> That's kind of a tough one, and there are a lot of names uh, I have had the opportunity recently. It just this year seems to be my year for working with Ukrainians. We sold our house this year to a Ukrainian. We bought a house from somebody that was Ukrainian who had flipped it, and the realtor was Ukrainian. I bought a tractor because I have a huge yard now, so I bought a lawn tractor, and sure enough, it was from a Ukrainian. And then I just recently hired a secretary. She's Ukrainian for uh, the New York Association of Christian Schools. So I've discovered something about the Ukrainians. They don't use enough vowels in their names. They're all hard names to pronounce. You have to ask them, and my hearing's not the best. Uh, I'm glad Jesus didn't have a difficult name. It's just an easy name. It's, It's an expressive name. The hymns speak often. I counted in your hymnal. You have 21 hymns that begin with the word Jesus. That does now count the ones that uh, have Jesus somewhere in the lyrics or somewhere in the title. Uh, This is one of my favorites. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. It tells me what my Father hath in store every day, and though I dread a darksome pass, yields sunlight on all the way. It tells of a one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. And then the chorus, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Why? Because he first loved me. Oh, there's, there's just something about the name Jesus. 
Now, the definition is given right in the, the text, for he shall save his people from his, their sins. Jesus is the New Testament equivalent of the word or name Joshua or Yeshua. It means Jehovah's Savior in Hebrew. The same thing in, in the Greek. Pronounced uh, not Jesus in Greek uh, because there's no J sound, but we use the J and Jesus is, works well. Uh, it's, it's a very expressive name. We, uh, and of course it fits. You've known names of people that don't fit. If I mention the name Tom, there's people that would come to, to mind. Not only me, but you know a lot of, if I mention Jim or James, you know a lot of people named James, but once in a while, you'll meet somebody, and they have a name, and it, it doesn't fit. Names are funny things sometimes. I, I, Barb went to college with a girl named Candy Barr. I knew a Rose Bush. Okay. There are some names that are they're kind of funny names that, you know, that stand out. The worst name I ever heard my whole life was an heiress in Texas. It was in Newsweek magazine. When she died, her obituary, the little column was there, her uh, father's name was Hogg, H-O-G-G, and believe it or not, this dad named his daughter, I'm a Hogg. Now, that's bad. But the name Jesus fits. It's, express, it's who he is. He is Jehovah's Savior. Right from the start, in Luke chapter 1, verse 31, they present Jesus, the baby Jesus, in the temple after the time of circumcision and purification, and they officially name him Jesus because the angel said that will be his name. His name will be Jesus. It's a very expressive name. It's, a, it's an effective name. It's effective. Uh, turn your Bibles to the book of John. When we pray, John 14, verse 13, we have promises from God. Whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So when we pray, how do we pray? We pray in Jesus' name. We usually end our prayers that way. Chapter 15, verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that you should go forth and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever he asks the Father in my name, he, he may give it unto you. In chapter 16, verse 23, and in that day you shall ask nothing, verily I say, you shall ask me nothing, verily, verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Amen. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. God wants us to have fullness of joy. Verse 26, in that day you shall ask in my name, and I will not say unto you, that I will pray, and I will not, uh, and I will say not unto you that I will pray in the Father for you. Prayer is to be done in Jesus' name. Uh, when some men tried to cast demons out of a person, not having known Jesus Christ, they said, In the name of Jesus and of Paul, whom he preached, come out. And the demons respond, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So when we pray, we don't come on our own merits. We come on the merits of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. The name is effective. We could say, in other words, there's power in the name of Jesus. There is power. We uh, made fun of the occult when I was in college. Maranatha Baptist Bible College bought an old military academy and uh, they first year they set it up so there were two large barracks type rooms for for guys. I was on the second floor dorm. I had 27 roommates, wooden floors, bunk beds, and this wooden and steam heat. And that combination, there are a lot of noises at night. The wood creaks and it sounded sometimes like people walking around. And one of my friends said we they'd had a a demon attack them. And, of course, we made fun of him because we didn't really think that would be true. And so we'd go around going, woo, and all this kind of stuff and make all kinds of funny noises. And then bizarre things started happening in our, in our dorm. 
And there were other guys that claimed they were attacked, that suddenly they're laying in bed and suddenly they felt like something was smothering them or on top of them and all kinds of things. Dr. Cederholm brought a couple of us together that were uh, making fun. I don't know if he thought we were behind it or what, but uh, he said, boys, uh, the occult's nothing to play around with. He said, we want to put a stop to this. We're going to put a stop to it tonight. And so he came into the dorm and he prayed in the name of Jesus. And he rebuked the devil and said, this is God's property. And these young men are God's servants. And you're to leave them alone in the name of Jesus. He claimed the blood and the name. We read in the book of Revelation concerning the time people in the tribulation dealing with Antichrist, they overcame him by the word of the testimony and in the name of Jesus Christ. They overcame him. Power in the blood, we sang about, or the family sang about. Power in the blood. There's power in that name. I, uh, I'm embarrassed to say it, but when I was a senior in high school, although I knew the Lord, I wasn't living for him, and we had a student come from Japan Isamu Ichikawa. Isamu was a great guy, but in talking to him, we discovered there are no swear words in Japanese. And so we, we tried to, to uh, sell him on some swear words. That's a stupid thing, I know, but it illustrates a point. Uh, we told him to use Buddha instead of Jesus. It doesn't work. Nobody swears using Mohammed's name. There's no power there. Nobody swears to the Hindu gods. There's no power. But there's power in the name Jesus. Now, since then, I've learned that, that swearing is actually a prayer. So if you say, God damn something, that's really a prayer. Do you really want God to do that? You have to th I heard a mother a while back say that to her kids. Do you really want God to damn your children? So what do you mean? What are you talking about? Well, that's what you just prayed. There's, there's power in the name of Jesus. Uh, it can be misused. Of course, you know, that's not honoring to God. Uh, power. Power. It's, it's a wonderful name. The name of Jesus. It's an exclusive name. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given upon men whereby we must be saved. There are people once in a while that will make statements about people who die. I, I didn't see all the funeral this week of George H. Bush. I saw parts of it. And it's kind of amazing to me how the media that hated him when he was alive suddenly make him a saint when he's dead. And it's also true that there's enough roots of our Christian heritage that I noticed there were no contemporary songs that were sung, no contemporary gospel songs sung at, at the funeral or played. But I did hear Amazing Grace. I did hear the U.S. Army Band playing hymns when the, he's coming off. I heard patriotic music as well, but it's part of their, you know, there's power in the name. Uh, President w., George W. Bush uh, commented at the end of his tribute to his dad that he would see him again. In fact, his last words, uh, George W. Bush called his father and said, Dad, I love you, and I'll see you on the other side. Uh, we have a tendency to forget that. that uh, and there are people, when they die, they think, well, everybody's in heaven. Everybody goes there. No, no, it's, it's exclusive. There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh the Father but by me. That's narrow. That's exclusive. There's only one way. And that's by receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I, I hope George H. Bush did know the Lord. I'm not his judge. I hope he did. He went to a church that, you know, sometimes they preach the gospel and sometimes they don't. And the priest, I did hear, praying that God would admit him into heaven. You don't have to pray that. When you're a Christian, as soon as you die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You're there. But if you don't know the Lord, if you've never come to Christ, then you're lost. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. A lot of people know that, but they don't know the next verse. For God sent his, not his son in the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. I had some Jehovah Witnesses come to my door one day and, and wanted to help me get to the king, into the kingdom. And so I said, well, what do I have to do? And they, they told me some of what I have to do. And I said, well, do you know that you have eternal life? I said, I already know that I have eternal life. They said, oh, you can't know that. I said, I, I already know. I said, do you have one of your Bibles? And they whipped out one of their Bibles. I said, read John 5 for me. And even in their twisted translation, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. I said, I have the Son. This is the record. I have eternal life. Verse 13. You just told me you don't know. It's because you don't know the Son. You don't know him. That's exclusive. It's narrow. Jesus said, narrow is the way that leads unto life. Narrow. I have people that every once in a while say, well, I, I don't like that. You're, that's too narrow. Well, life is narrow. Two plus two equals four. That's very demanding. Even if you want it to be five, that doesn't change the fact. It is what it is. And Christianity is based on what Jesus Christ did for us. He came to live and to die. It's the greatest story ever told. How Jesus, God, became a man, lived a righteous life on earth, and then went to the cross and died for our sins and rose again the third day. And he's coming again. The same Jesus is coming again. It's an easy name. It's an effective name. It's an exclusive name. But it's also a name that's going to be exalted. Turn over to the book of Philippians. Chapter 2, verse, beginning at verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took on him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of a cross. Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him. His name is above all names, all others. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. That's all intelligent life. Someday, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's at the name of Jesus. It's an exalted name. None higher. But I wonder... Do you know him? Have you come to that place where you've received him as your personal Lord and Savior? Do you know him? He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's my Savior. He's my shepherd, my guide. Do you know him? Do you know him? I'm going to live with him forever. Because one day I received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. The question is, have you? Have you? Barb's mom the other day got serious and talked to Barb about death. She's 90 years old, and she, she made the comment that she knows that she didn't have much time left, that she's going to die soon. Now, none of us know when that time is, and I remind her from that, of that fact from time to time. We don't, we don't know really if we have tomorrow, let alone uh, you know, next month or next week or next year. We don't know. I, when I do on faith, put on Facebook where I'm going to be on Sunday, I always put if the Lord wills. Because I don't know. Maybe that's my calendar. That's my plan. This is my schedule. But God may have another plan. Sometimes he doesn't will. Not too many meetings get canceled because of weather. But, you know, one of these days, one of them are going to be canceled because I had an accident or I had a heart attack or I had a stroke or something, you know. Someday you're going to be gone. It's going to happen. I mean, Mom, Barb said, well, Mom, what happens when you die? She said, well, I hope I'll go to heaven. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. And so Barb, Barb said, Mom, that's the wrong answer. And she said, oh, yeah, I know that I'm going to heaven. 
Why? Because one day I received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. So we don't have to hope for heaven. We know. We know. We have God's word on it. You have the Father's name on it. And there's power in that name. Oh, how I love Jesus. Isn't that the prayer of our heart? Oh, how I love Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this great church. Thank you for Pastor and the ministry he's had here over the many years, along with his wife. Thank you for his faithfulness. But Father, he would say, and I would say, our ministry is all about you. Because you have a name that is above every name. You have a name that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Lord, hasten the day. If there's someone here that does not know Christ as Savior, may today be their day of decision. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor.